chapter 46. This is the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet concerning the nations. Concerning Egypt, this is the message against the army of Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, which was defeated at Carchemish on the Euphrates River by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah. Prepare your shields, both large and small, and march out for battle. Harness the horses, mount the steeds. Take your positions with helmets on. Polish your spears, put on your armor. What do I see? They are terrified. They are retreating. Their warriors are defeated. They flee in haste without looking back, and there is terror on every side, declares the Lord. The swift cannot flee, nor the strong escape. In the north, by the river Euphrates, they stumble and fall. Who is this that rises like the Nile, like rivers of surging waters? Egypt rises like the Nile, like rivers of surging waters. She says, I will rise and cover the earth. I will destroy cities and their people. Charge, O horses. Drive furiously, O charioteers. March on, O warriors, men of Cush and Put who carry shields, men of Lydia who draw the bow. But that day belongs to the Lord, the Lord Almighty. A day of vengeance for vengeance on his foes. The sword will devour till it is satisfied, till it has quenched its thirst with blood. For the Lord, the Lord Almighty, will offer sacrifice in the land of the north by the river Euphrates. Go up to Gilead and get balm, O virgin daughter of Egypt. But you multiply remedies in vain. There is no healing for you. The nations will hear of your shame. Your cries will fill the earth. One warrior will stumble over another. Both will fall down together. This is the message the Lord spoke to Jeremiah the prophet about the coming of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to attack Egypt. Announce this in Egypt and proclaim it in Migdal. Proclaim it also in Memphis and Toppenes. Take your positions and get ready, for the sword devours those around you. Why will your warriors be laid low? They cannot stand, for the Lord will push them down. They will stumble repeatedly. They will fall over each other. They will say, Get up! Let us go back to our own people and our native lands, away from the sword of the oppressor. There they will exclaim, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, is only a loud noise. He has missed his opportunity. As surely as I live, declares the king, whose name is the Lord Almighty, one will come who is like Tabor among the mountains, like Carmel by the sea. Pack your belongings for exile, you who live in Egypt, for Memphis will be laid waste and lie in ruins without inhabitant. Egypt is a beautiful heifer, but a gadfly is coming against her from the north. The mercenaries in her ranks are like fattened calves. They too will turn and flee together. They will not stand their ground, for the day of disaster is coming upon them, the time for them to be punished. Egypt will hiss like a fleeing serpent as the enemy advances in force. They will come against her with axes, like men who cut down trees. They will chop down her forest, declares the Lord, dense though it be. They are more numerous than locusts. They cannot be counted. The daughter of Egypt will be put to shame, handed over to the people of the north. The Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, I am about to bring punishment on Ammon, God of Thebes, on Pharaoh, on Egypt and her gods and her kings, and on those who rely on Pharaoh. I will hand them over to those who seek their lives, to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and his officers. Later, however, Egypt will be inhabited as in times past, declares the Lord. Do not fear, O Jacob, my servant. Do not be dismayed, O Israel. I will surely save you out of a distant place, your descendants from the land of their exile. Jacob will again have peace and security, and no one will make him afraid. Do not fear, O Jacob, my servant, for I am with you, declares the Lord. Though I completely destroy all the nations among which I scatter you, I will not completely destroy you. I will discipline you, but only with justice. I will not let you go entirely unpunished. Chapter 47 This is the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet concerning the Philistines before Pharaoh attacked Gaza. This is what the Lord says. See how the waters are rising in the north. They will become an overflowing torrent. They will overflow the land and everything in it, the towns and those who live in them. The people will cry out. All who dwell in the land will wail at the sound of the hoofs of galloping steeds, at the noise of enemy chariots and the rumble of their wheels. Fathers will not turn to help their children. Their hands will hang limp. 
for the day has come to destroy all the Philistines and to cut off all survivors who could help Tyre and Sidon. The Lord is about to destroy the Philistines, the remnant from the coasts of Kaftar. Gaza will shave her head in mourning. Ashkelon will be silenced. O remnant on the plain, how long will you cut yourselves? Ah, sword of the Lord, you cry, how long till you rest? Return to your scabbard, cease and be still. But how can it rest when the Lord has commanded it, when he has ordered it to attack Ashkelon and the coast? Chapter 48 Concerning Moab This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Woe to Nebo, for it will be ruined. Curiathaim will be disgraced and captured. The stronghold will be disgraced and shattered. Moab will be praised no more. In Heshbon, men will plot her downfall. Come, let us put an end to that nation. You too, O madman, will be silenced. The sword will pursue you. Listen to the cries from Horonaim, cries of great havoc and destruction. Moab will be broken. The little ones will cry out. They go up the way to Luith, weeping bitterly as they go. On the road down to Horonaim, Anguished cries over the destruction are heard. Flee, run for your lives, become like a bush in the desert. Since you trust in your deeds and riches, you too will be taken captive. And Chemish will go into exile, together with his priests and officials. The destroyer will come against every town, and not a town will escape. The valley will be ruined, and the plateau destroyed, because the Lord has spoken. Put salt on Moab, for she will be laid waste. Her towns will become desolate, with no one to live in them. A curse on him who is lax in doing the Lord's work. A curse on him who keeps his sword from bloodshed. Moab has been at rest from youth, like wine left on its dregs, not poured from one jar to another. She has not gone into exile. So she tastes as she did, and her aroma is unchanged. But days are coming declares the Lord, when I will send men who pour from jars and they will pour her out, they will empty her jars and smash her jugs. Then Moab will be ashamed of Chemish, as the house of Israel was ashamed when they trusted in Bethel. How can you say we are warriors, men valiant in battle? Moab will be destroyed and her towns invaded. Her finest young men will go down in the slaughter, declares the king, whose name is the Lord Almighty. The fall of Moab is at hand. Her calamity will come quickly. Mourn for her, all who live around her, all who know her fame. Say, how broken is the mighty scepter, how broken the glorious staff. Come down from your glory and sit on the parched ground, O inhabitants of the daughter of Dibon, for he who destroys Moab will come up against you and ruin your fortified cities. Stand by the road and watch, you who live in a roar. Ask the man fleeing and the woman escaping. Ask them what has happened. Moab is disgraced, for she is shattered. Wail and cry out, announced by the Arnon that Moab is destroyed. Judgment has come to the plateau, to Holon, Jaza, and Mephaeth, to Deban, Nebo, and Beth Diblatheum, to Curiathaim, Beth Gamel, and Beth Mean, to Curioth and Basra, to all the towns of Moab far and near. Moab's horn is cut off, her arm is broken, declares the Lord. Make her drunk, for she has defied the Lord. Let Moab wallow in her vomit, let her be an object of ridicule. Was not Israel the object of your ridicule? Was she caught among thieves that you shake your head in scorn whenever you speak of her? Abandon your towns and dwell among the rocks, you who live in Moab. Be like a dove that makes its nest at the mouth of a cave. We have heard of Moab's pride, her overweening pride and conceit, her pride and arrogance and the haughtiness of her heart. I know her insolence, but it is futile, declares the Lord, and her boasts accomplish nothing. Therefore I wail over Moab, for all Moab I cry out. I moan for the men of Kerhereseth. I weep for you as Jazer weeps, O vines of Sibma. Your branches spread as far as the sea. They reached as far as the sea of Jazer. The destroyer has fallen on your ripened fruit and grapes. Joy and gladness are gone from the orchards and fields of Moab. I have stopped the flow of wine from the presses. No one treads them with shouts of joy. Although there are shouts, they are not shouts of joy. 
The sound of their cry rises from Heshbon to Eliela and Jahaz, from Zoar as far as Horonaim and Eglath Shalishia, for even the waters of Nimrim are dried up. In Moab I will put an end to those who make offerings on the high places and burn incense to their gods, declares the Lord. So my heart laments for Moab like a flute. It laments like a flute for the men of Kirhareseth. The wealth they acquired is gone. Every head is shaved and every beard cut off. Every hand is slashed and every waist is covered with sackcloth. On all the roofs in Moab and in the public squares, there is nothing but mourning. For I have broken Moab like a jar that no one wants, declares the Lord. How shattered she is! How they wail! How Moab turns her back in shame! Moab has become an object of ridicule, an object of horror to all those around her. This is what the Lord says. Look, an eagle is swooping down, spreading its wings over Moab. Kirioth will be captured and the strongholds taken. In that day, the hearts of Moab's warriors will be like the heart of a woman in labor. Moab will be destroyed as a nation because she defied the Lord. Terror and pit and snare await you, O people of Moab, declares the Lord. Whoever flees from the terror will fall into a pit. Whoever climbs out of the pit will be caught in a snare, for I will bring upon Moab the year of her punishment, declares the Lord. In the shadow of Heshbon, the fugitives stand helpless. For a fire has gone out from Heshbon, a blaze from the midst of Sion. It burns the foreheads of Moab, the skulls of the noisy boasters. Woe to you, O Moab! The people of Chemosh are destroyed. Your sons are taken into exile and your daughters into captivity. Yet I will restore the fortunes of Moab in days to come, declares the Lord. Here ends the judgment on Moab. Chapter 49 Concerning the Ammonites This is what the Lord says. Has Israel no sons? Has she no heirs? Why then has Molech taken possession of Gad? Why do his people live in its towns? But the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will sound the battle cry against Rabbah of the Ammonites. It will become a mound of ruins, and its surrounding villages will be set on fire. Then Israel will drive out those who drove her out, says the Lord. Wail, O Heshbon, for Ai is destroyed. Cry out, O inhabitants of Rabbah. Put on sackcloth and mourn. Rush here and there inside the walls, for Moloch will go into exile together with his priests and officials. Why do you boast of your valleys, boast of your valleys so fruitful? O unfaithful daughter, you trust in your riches and say, Who will attack me? I will bring terror on you from all those around you, declares the Lord, the Lord Almighty. Every one of you will be driven away, and no one will gather the fugitives. Yet afterward, I will restore the fortunes of the Ammonites, declares the Lord. Concerning Edom this is what the Lord Almighty says. Is there no longer wisdom in Teman? Has counsel perished from the prudent? Has their wisdom decayed? Turn and flee. Hide in deep caves, you who live in Dedan. For I will bring disaster on Esau at the time I punish him. If grape pickers came to you, would they not leave a few grapes? If thieves came during the night, would they not steal only as much as they wanted? But I will strip Esau bare. I will uncover his hiding places so that he cannot conceal himself. His children, relatives, and neighbors will perish, and he will be no more. Leave your orphans. I will protect their lives. Your widows, too, can trust in me. This is what the Lord says. If those who do not deserve to drink the cup must drink it, why should you go unpunished? You will not go unpunished, but must drink it. I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that Basra will become a ruin and an object of horror, of reproach and of cursing, and all its towns will be in ruins forever. I have heard a message from the Lord. An envoy was sent to the nations to say, Assemble yourselves to attack it. Rise up for battle. Now I will make you small among the nations, despised among men. The terror you inspire and the pride of your heart have deceived you. You who live in the clefts of the rocks, who occupy the heights of the hill. Though you build your nest as high as the eagles, from there I will bring you down, declares the Lord. Edom will become an object of horror. All who pass by will be appalled and will scoff, be 
because of all its wounds. As Sodom and Gomorrah were overthrown, along with their neighboring towns, says the Lord, so no one will live there, no man will dwell in it. Like a lion coming up from Jordan's thickets to a rich pasture land, I will chase Edom from its land in an instant. Who is the chosen one I will appoint for this? Who is like me? And who can challenge me? And what shepherd can stand against me? Therefore, hear what the Lord has planned against Edom, what he has purposed against those who live in Teman. The young of the flock will be dragged away. He will completely destroy their pasture because of them. At the sound of their fall, the earth will tremble. Their cry will resound to the Red Sea. Look, an eagle will soar and swoop down, spreading its wings over Basra. In that day, the hearts of Edom's warriors will be like the heart of a woman in labor. Concerning Damascus, Hamath and Arpad are dismayed, for they have heard bad news. They are disheartened, troubled like the restless sea. Damascus has become feeble. She has turned to flee, and panic has gripped her. Anguish and pain have seized her, pain like that of a woman in labor. Why has the city of renown not been abandoned, the town in which I delight? Surely her young men will fall in the streets. All her soldiers will be silenced in that day, declares the Lord Almighty. I will set fire to the walls of Damascus. It will consume the fortresses of Ben-Hadad. Concerning Kedar and the kingdoms of Hazor, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, attacked. This is what the Lord says. Arise and attack Kedar and destroy the people of the east. Their tents and their flocks will be taken. Their shelters will be carried off with all their goods and camels. Men will shout to them, Terror on every side! Flee quickly away! Stay in deep caves, you who live in Hazor, declares the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has plotted against you. He has devised a plan against you. Arise and attack a nation at ease which lives in confidence, declares the Lord. A nation that has neither gates nor bars, its people live alone. Their camels will become plunder, and their large herds will be booty. I will scatter to the winds those who are in distant places, and will bring disaster on them from every side, declares the Lord. Hazer will become a haunt of jackals, a desolate place forever. No one will live there, no man will dwell in it.